Many doctors are missing this diagnosis and it is often overlooked. The condition I'm talking about is called mast cell activation syndrome, also known as MCAS. Hi, I'm Dr. Micah Yu, board certified integrative rheumatologist, and I see mast cell activation syndrome in my clinic, and I see doctors miss this quite often. If you've ever experienced unexplained allergic reactions, medication sensitivities, supplement sensitivities, chronic fatigue, brain fog, GI problems, joint pain, muscle pain, and a myriad of other symptoms, then you want to keep watching because you might have this condition. I am seeing more and more patients with mast cell activation syndrome in my clinic. After COVID, there have been so many more people with mast cell activation syndrome. And sometimes it doesn't come by itself. Sometimes you see dysautonomia or fast heart rates, unexplained heat intolerance, that doctors aren't putting the puzzle pieces together. I'm gonna show you the signs and symptoms of MCAS so that you can be your own detective and find out whether you potentially have MCAS. Sign number one, skin manifestations of MCAS. So if you're having recurrent flushing, where you get red on your skin, recurrent itching on their skin, and also hives that keep coming back, and my patients don't understand why they keep getting hives. So skin rashes is something I would look for in a patient that potentially has MCAS. Another sign, are GI issues. Some of my patients with MCAS have abdominal pain, diarrhea, nausea, and acid reflux as well on top of bloating. Sometimes I see that my patients after they eat certain foods, some of the foods that may be high in histamines, they may get bloating, abdominal pain after they eat these foods. Some examples of high histamine foods include cheese, tomatoes, processed meats, chocolate, soy sauce as well. So these are some of the signs that my patient could have mast cell activation syndrome. Let's talk about the cardiovascular symptoms a patient with MCAS might have. Oftentimes when I see a patient with MCAS, I'm looking for a fast heart rate or a patient with dysautonomia, where when they stand up, they can get a really fast heart rate. But the difference between dysautonomia or POTS with a patient with orthostatic hypotension is when a patient stands up and they get a really fast heart rate, a patient on the POTS doesn't really have their blood pressure drop. Whereas a patient with orthostatic hypotension where the blood pulls to the legs, usually the blood pressure does drop. So that's the biggest difference. So I'm usually looking for a fast heart rate and low blood pressure in a patient with MCAS. Some of my patients do report respiratory issues such as wheezing or feeling that the throat might be closing after certain triggers, fragrances, or foods. And other signs of MCAS include neurologic symptoms and musculoskeletal symptoms. So some of my patients do experience joint pain and they also experience muscle pain. And if you're not careful, you can be misdiagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis or some other arthritis when in fact your joint pain was coming from mast cell activation syndrome. And some of the neurologic symptoms a patient can experience has to do a lot with the brain, so headaches, brain fog, and also memory issues as well. I see all these symptoms in my patients with mast cell activation syndrome. And it can be so confusing and so frustrating for the patients because you have symptoms from head to toe, yet doctors can't figure you out. So you can see how confusing it can be with all the symptoms I've just gone over. Other symptoms that a patient with MCAS could experience is fatigue and severe fatigue as well, where they can't really do chores sometimes. Others could be fluctuations in body temperature. Sometimes patients feel really hot, really cold. They can be even heat intolerant, where when they go in the sun, they feel really, really crummy and they can't operate and they get these rashes that come out. They're sun sensitive. And other symptoms that I look for, especially in the patient with MCAS, is a history of a patient telling me that they're having sensitivities or even allergic reactions to multiple medications and supplements as well. You have to understand it's not the medication itself inside that the patient's having issues with, it's the outer coating of the pill itself. And those are called excipients. And those are used to actually make the pill itself. So if you're having issues with certain ingredients in the pill, then you need to get a compounded medication to remove those excipients out of the medication. Another sign and symptom that I look for is a patient that has multiple reactions to fragrances 
and to foods as well. So if a patient tells me they go to the store, such as Target, or they go to a store with a lot of makeup and fragrances, and they start getting reactions, severe hives, severe allergic reactions, that gives me a clue that they could have MCAS. Now, with the sensitivities and allergies and the allergic reactions you get from having MCAS, you can react to pretty much anything. Pollen, fragrances I mentioned, air freshen, mold, food additives, MSG, food coloring, high histamine foods, even foods that are not high histamine sometimes patients react to as well. So there are a lot of different things to watch out for when you have MCAS because I've seen patients flare and get triggered from any of these different sources. Now, let's talk about labs. There are multiple labs you will want your doctor to get for mast cell activation syndrome. Most doctors don't know these labs. So after watching this video, you'll be more informed on what labs to get in order to diagnose mast cell activation syndrome. I do want to add that you don't need a positive lab in order to diagnose mast cell activation syndrome. Sometimes I see patients come to me in my clinic and they have all these different signs and clues that they could have MCAS, but their labs turn out negative and you can still get that diagnosis. Some doctors are very strict with their diagnostic criteria and they will only diagnose a patient if their labs are positive. And I will say that if you go by this route, your doctor could be missing your diagnosis. Lab number one that you do want to get is something called tryptase. Tryptase can be positive in a mast cell tumor, but can also be positive in mast cell activation syndrome. I will say most of the time, this lab is negative. Sometimes you can catch a patient with this positive lab if a patient's flaring. I have hardly seen this lab become positive, but I still get it because it's a core part of the lab workup. Lab number two that you do want to get is plasma histamine. So you want to get histamine in the blood. Sometimes when that's positive, it could be a clue that the patient could have MCAS. You also want to get prostaglandin D2. So prostaglandin D2 can turn up positive in MCAS. And you do want to get the urine type. So get urine prostaglandin D2. Another lab you do also want to get is called N-methylhistamine. And this is a urine kind. So you want to get urine N-methylhistamine to help diagnose MCAS as well. Another lab is leukotriene E4. And on top of that, you want to get chromogranin A. All these are signs, if positive, that a patient could have MCAS. Now I want to reiterate that when these labs are negative, you can still have MCAS. So you really got to play detective and match up the symptoms with the labs to see whether a patient such as yourself could have mast cell activation syndrome. Now what kind of doctor do you want to see for MCAS? Well, if you're talking about traditional allopathic medicine, then the allergist is a specialist of choice to see whether you have MCAS. But there are a lot of integrative doctors out there that also diagnose and treat mast cell activation syndrome as well. Sometimes a general doctor such as a family medicine or an internist can also diagnose this problem. And there are other specialists just like myself. I'm a rheumatologist and I actually look for MCAS and treat my patients for mast cell activation syndrome because I see the pattern and it can overlap with my own conditions that I see in my patients. So sometimes I see patients with lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and even Sjogren's with mast cell activation syndrome. I treat all these diseases together in the patient and be the main doctor for my patients. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment below what you learned about from this video and if you have mast cell activation syndrome and what symptoms you experience. And please subscribe to this channel so you can get more information just like this in the future. And be sure to watch my next video on the holistic approach and treatment to mast cell activation syndrome. You don't want to miss that one. And if you want to see me in my clinic, you can find me at drlifestyle.org. That's drlifestyle.org. See you guys next time.